Alberta present. Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. For Hasselt? Here. 16 present. Thank you. We have a quorum. And I will ask for approval of minutes of the last meeting held October 9th, 2006. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Then the first item on the agenda is RO number 220-0607 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Carter Paulus stating that the police department leadership is out of control and should be dismissed forthwith. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I believe at this point this council has uh, more important things to discuss than uh, uh, views uh, that are, are extremists such as these. Um, so at this point, uh, I would like to uh, call this question without further discussion. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to file. And I also have a motion to call the question. The motion to call the question is a two-thirds vote. I have a motion and a second to call the question. It's a two-thirds vote, uh, which would be proper to vote on the motion to file or the... I believe the motion to file takes precedence. Alderman Graff, could you repeat that? I believe the motion to file takes precedence. Okay, thank you. We will vote on the motion to file. Uh, any discussion under the motion? Alderman Hanna, did you... Thank you. Uh, could you call the roll, Alderman Serta? Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta, aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We will move on to RC number 526 by Building Use Committee submitting the Police Department Building and City Hall Space list summaries from Zimmerman Design Group. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would also move that that RC be accepted and placed on file. Second. I have a motion and a second to place the RC on file. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Alderman Meyer. Oh, I'm waiting for the next one. Okay. <laughs> so we'll move on. RC number 2240607, by Public Protection and Safety, who met and referred the resolution to the Committee of the Whole. Resolution number 1180607 by Alderperson Meyer directing that all police department vehicles be moved to the Municipal Service Building. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And could we take number seven along with that? Please do. Okay. Um, I would like to send this to the council with a favorable recommendation. Second. I have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think we're jumping the gun here. We just met with the architect. We've given the architect marching orders to get back to us with some schematics to let us know what his two or three scenarios would be, given the information he's collected from us and from the police department. I would prefer to wait to see what his renderings are and what his recommendations are before we start making decisions like this. Thank you. Alderman Racky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would a motion to hold in this committee be appropriate this time? Last week we approved the capital improvements budget, which puts us at $9 million. We have a piece of property. We finally have something to go upon. And I agree with Alderman Hannah. I mean, we're jumping the gun here. Now we finally got some numbers and some stuff to work with. Let's just, in my opinion, let this stuff sit in place for right now. We can revisit it. We can file it. We can do whatever we want in the future. But I would just say let's just hold this for right now and, and see what the future brings. The architect's got his, you know, some numbers and things to work with now, so let's not start throwing any more monkey wrenches into the system. Let's just see if we can't get this thing done. Thank you. Alderman Susha? 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was not in the most recent discussions with Zimmerman, but maybe two or three weeks ago I was at a meeting with um, Savinash, and one of the things that he kept saying to us over and over is that we changed the location and we weren't giving him any guidance. He was looking for some guidance. So I think that it's not too late. This, this meeting that we most recently talked about just occurred last week. It was maybe two hours ago that the Finance Committee made the recommendation of moving ahead with Zimmerman. I really don't think that they um, have started any work on this because they wouldn't do so without a contract. So I would like to send them a list of things that they should consider. I think they're looking for some direction. and We have the opportunity tonight to give them a little bit of direction. Um, and I think right now we have a motion before us. What we would be looking at is um, moving um, the maintenance of the police vehicles to the municipal service building. Um, what that would mean is that police officers would show up for work. They would go to the new police station. They would park their personal car at the new police station. They would get into their squad car. When the squad car needed service, then they would drive down to the municipal service building to get their car serviced. They would probably drop it off, let the mechanic work on it, pick up a different vehicle, and then uh, presume with their normal daily routine. Um, another point of interest is that squad cars are always going down to the municipal service building because that's where they go to get their gas. So they're probably going down there once a day. It would be a very simple transfer of vehicles. You drive in after you get your gas or before you get the gas and you switch vehicles so the maintenance guy could fix it. I think it would really give Zimmerman some guidance if we said don't worry about the maintenance component. Maintenance can be done down at uh, the municipal service building and, and that's what we're trying to accomplish tonight is giving them some direction. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Vice President Serta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was wondering if Alderperson Susha could share what meeting John Sabinash, where you gained um, information concerning um, what meeting that was that John Sabinash and you were able to meet with him? This was a couple of weeks ago. There were some other Alder people there. I, I think Alderperson Verhassel was there. I'm not sure. Was Someone that else? a public meeting? I don't think it was a quorum of any site, any type. It was. Um, it, it would just would be really helpful for the rest of the elder persons to be privy to that information as well, considering this issue. And secondly, I don't know if um, Chief Kirk would like to respond to see to the feasibility of this um, in terms of your officer going down to the municipal building and switching cars, if that's even feasible. Chief. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we discussed this several different times. We discussed it in uh, Building Use uh, Committee. Um, there's a real concern uh, that we have. We would ask that the uh, fleet maintenance be maintained at the police garage. There was, I believe, the um, document number eight uh, speaks of keeping the, uh, the mechanics at the uh, police garage and things of this nature. If you're going to have a police garage, we believe that the mechanic should be at our garage. The uh, round trip from our new police uh, station on 23rd Street to the uh, Department of Public Works would be 3.3 uh, miles. But it's not necessarily the mileage, even though it is. It's not necessarily the mileage, it's the officer's downtime. Uh, I also have my fleet mechanic, Dave Daniels, here tonight that he could explain some of the concerns if, if you wish to ask him. Um, the downtime is uh, a real concern to us. The way we operate right now, and some of this may be a repeat to many of you, the way we operate right now is we, we park the vehicles in a garage. Anytime someone needs a vehicle, they're, they're there and they're ready and they're accessible. If we have an emergency, we have officers who frequently come out of the station, CID or things of this nature, who then grab a vehicle, whichever vehicle is available, uh, and then go to the scene or wherever they need to go. Uh, when the officers come in to the station, uh, Dave Daniels, the fleet mechanic, takes the opportunity to take a look at those vehicles, to make the minor changes. Uh, every day I see in the uh, garage that some vehicles are down for this service or that service. Um, it's, it's efficient. The way we have, when I first started on the road back in 1977, we would be given a key for car number eight, car number nine, and you waited until that car arrived. Not anymore. You get a key, you go out, you find whatever vehicle is available, and you go. And you get on the road. You start handling complaints immediately. I think you're concerned about you taking a very efficient system 
one that we took years to develop to make sure people get on the road. And when you come in, mechanic, you take a look at that car. If there's something that needs to be taken care of, you take care of it if they can while they're in the station. To take a trip down to Public Works, though it's feasible, and if you decide that this is what you want to do, I think we're going to have some downtime. We can do this. Other cities have done this. I don't think if, in fact, you're going to build us a garage, when dealing with public works, one of the main concerns that we had was a, a lift and as the uh, expense of a, not a mechanic, so a floor standing lift versus one, one that's sunken in the ground, a ground lift, I, I, I think that's what they call it. So there isn't a whole lot of savings that you're going to see here if you're going to have a garage at the police department, which I believe you are going to have a garage there. So I think these number six and number seven relate to number eight because the last time we discussed a lot of this at building use, we proceeded with number eight because I believed, I thought these number six and number seven were, were done and they were going to be pushed aside. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, the, the resolution is to move the mechanic to the service building where all the other mechanics service the other um, city vehicles. The police vehicles will be stored at the new police station in their new garage. Again, I have uh, 1248, which speaks specifically, the committee to was referring to resolution 118.06 by 07 uh, by, okay, by Alderman Meyer directed that all maintenance of police vehicles be moved. Is that the one? Right. Rather than, and the maintenance and then the storage. Just maintenance. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Just maintenance, not storage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this was discussed in building use, as uh, Chief Kirk had said, um, and at that point uh, it, was, it was discussed in depth um, and, and pretty much uh, decided, uh, agreed that there were, was no cost savings, there was no greater efficiency by moving the vehicle maintenance to the municipal building. Uh, we would still have to have the same mechanic. Uh, the, at the mu municipal service building, uh, there would have to be a brick or a cement partition built for security of the, of the vehicle maintenance bay. Uh, the, the police mechanic at this point uses all of his own tools on the police vehicles. Um, if there wasn't that security there, he definitely is not going to bring his, his tools, which he furnishes, um, down to the uh, municipal service building. Uh, for them to sit in the wide open and uh, uh, for anybody uh, uh, to have access to. Um, the, the security of the vehicles themselves uh, um, at the municipal service building, um, you know, there are a lot of things in police vehicles that aren't in the rest of uh, the uh, municipal fleet, uh, you know, namely the, the computers and shotguns, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it just did not seem to make any sense whatsoever to to move maintenance to the municipal building. Uh, there was no cost savings. Um, there was a, definitely a, a loss in department efficiency. And so therefore I don't, uh, you know, I don't see why it should uh, even be a, a valid uh, discussion at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get Alderman Montemurro. Um, thank you, Chairman Vanderweel. Um, the, the resolution of Alderman Meyer makes it very clear that it's the maintenance. The resolution doesn't correspond with the explanation on the Committee of the Whole, but the resolution is very clear that it is the maintenance. 
And we all know how we all feel, and we have heard all the reasons. And one of the reasons for the savings of money would be the construction, the initial construction of the floor space on the 23rd Street. So I don't know that we need to go over this again and again. I would like to call the question. We all know where we stand. Let's vote. Okay. Question uh, was called and a second, and we need a two-thirds vote on the calling of the question. So I'll ask for a roll call. Warren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Certain no, because this is for, just for clarification, favorable recommendation to council. Right now this is just to call the question if we should vote on it or not without okay. any more discussion. And I'll change to yes. Davis. Aye. Groth. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Burhassel. Aye. 16. Motion passes. So the, the question has been called. There will be no more discussion on the motion. And then I will ask for a roll call on the motion, which was to send the RC number 2240607 and RC number 2250607 to Common Council with a favorable recommendation. Alderman, under discussion, Alderman Graf. Um, just a clarification of one other thing is that. Um, um, I, is this on the, on the motion I just made yes. the file? All right. Correct. All right. On the motion, it's being recommended to council that it's a favorable report, but it's still a debatable question when it hits council floor. All right. Thank you. On the motion that I just made, Alderman Born, or clarified? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, so we're voting. We're voting on sending this uh, to council uh, with a favorable report to move the maintenance to the police department. Is that what we're voting on? No. To public works. I'm sorry. To public works. Yes. To to move it to public works. Just the maintenance to public works. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Serta with the roll call. Okay. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta, no. Davis. No. Groff. Aye. Hannah. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderwilly. No. Burhassel. Aye. Nine eyes. Motion fails. Passes. Motion passes. Nine eyes, eight no's? Or I thought for two thirds you need 11. Well, uh, the, the motion was no's, a majority. Yes. The motion that we just voted on would be a majority. Okay. So what was the? Uh, nine, ye nine yeses. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on. To number eight on the agenda is RC number 240607 by Building Use Committee, who met and made the following, following recommendations. To keep the mechanics with the police department when the police department moves to the North 23rd Street location. To have the police station would be built slab on grade with a butler garage, eight to 10,000 square feet. The fitness room would be included in the new police station with it housed in the garage if possible and give the architect the opportunity to increase the square footage of the police garage up to 20,000 square feet. Alderman Graf. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to take these points at a time uh, because the first one is keep the mechanics with the police department. That was the recommendation of the Building Use Committee. Um, and based on what we just voted on, um, I could um, ask for it to be voted on again, but I think it would come out probably the same way. So I'll ask that that recommendation be um, placed on file. Second. Motion is second to place the first recommendation of the RC on file. All, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion passes. Okay. Then I would make a, a motion that the police station would be built slab on grade with a butler garage, eight to 10,000 square feet. Second. 
Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I, I, I think we need some direction from the architect. We have a 2.7 acre site. On that 2.7 acres, we're supposed to fit a police department, the garage, parking, ingress, egress, access, etc. cetera, um, slab on grade. We're building on a landfill. We're building on unstable ground. To build slab on grade, are we actually going to save any money? We need a reinforced slab <coughs> because it is unstable ground. A lot more concrete costs, a lot more mesh costs. Are we going to be able to fit the size of the facility that we're going to require along with the garage, along with everything else on this site? Or are we going to have a site where we have a slab on grade building, we have a garage, uh, we have parking for the police vehicles, indoors and probably outdoors we're going to have to have it because we're not going to have enough space according to this to put them indoors. Where are the police officers going to park? Are they going to be able, are we going to have a lot big enough for them to fit in or are they going to be parking on North 23rd Street? or North 23rd Street and the Access Road and Superior Avenue. Uh, maybe they'll park over in the uh, park and save, uh, pick and save parking lot. I, I think a lot of this needs to be looked at. I think we need some true guidance rather than just saying, let's, let's squash this thing on this lot and save ourselves some money. Um, truthfully, my belief in order to be efficient, the reason we bought this lot, the reason that we, uh, we, that I went along with buying this property uh, was under the belief that we would excavate the garbage out of this property, the, the fill, and uh, build a 20,000 square foot garage and then go up from there. 20,000 square feet, 20, 20, 60. Two stories with a garage underneath it. Now all of a sudden we're building a slab on grade building with an eight to 10,000 square foot garage um, with a huge reinforced slab. Are we really going to be saving money doing this? I think another thing we need to look at, which I don't know if uh, this committee uh, has looked into it, we have a lot of contractors, a lot of uh, material suppliers in this county that we could probably contract with for buying a lot of the materials at cost or even better uh, in order to keep our costs down, in order to build the police department the facility that they should have. Um, at this point, I, I, I think to say, okay, we're going to pass this out of the council, we're gonna build an eight to 10,000 square foot garage now we're going to take the mechanic, put them down at the municipal building. Uh, when people are pulling in to get their cars fueled up, we'll just have the mechanic run out and uh, you know, act like he's NASCAR, check the car over so they can get back in and get back on the road. Uh, you can be the pit crew. I think this is ridiculous. So at this point, uh, please, at this point, until until we, we know what we're talking about, until we know what we're doing. Um, I've, I've built commercial properties in the past, and the first thing that I always do is I take a piece of notebook paper and I make a drawing. It scribbles. And I take this piece of paper based on the size of the lot I have, and I figure, okay, I can build a building this big, I can put my gas pumps here, I can do parking here, I can do this and that. And I give it to an architect. And uh, several tens of thousands the dollars later and several months later, you may end up with a property and it looks like that scribbled piece of paper basically with a, a lot more expense. But we need to give our architects some direction here um, and we need to consult with our police department and ask them what they need rather than us deciding what they need. So at this point, um, 
I uh, do not believe that we should recommend to the council that we build a eight to 10,000 square foot garage with a Butler building style. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I believe it's also premature to make sucker, such a recommendation. Uh, I don't, for one, without knowing anything about building costs, I don't know why it would be cheaper to have a Butler building there as opposed to simply excavating another six feet and with your foundation and such having to go down probably four feet anyway. So I need to see dollars and cents, and with that I think we'll have uh, some very helpful information. At this point, I have no sense that it's cheaper to go with the recommendation that's currently printed. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Hanna? Yeah, the, the architect knows that we're looking for 60,000 square foot. The architect knows what sort of parking we're looking for. Let's just give the architect a chance to come back to us with concrete ideas so we can move ahead. Um, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of, of being on a board that, uh, that oversaw large projects similar in nature to this. And you really need to just back off and let the architect do what they're paid to do. And that's give you good information and give you some ideas. Uh, I think we're jumping the gun. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. When I'm looking at these four points, I think number two and number four are somewhat <clears throat> redundant. Perhaps we could combine them. Point number two says the police station would be built slab on grade with a butler garage of eight to 10,000 square feet. And point number four says give the architect the opportunity to increase the square footage of the police <clears throat> garage up to 20,000 square feet. Um, I think you're kind of contradicting yourself. Um, perhaps the person who made the motion would would agree that uh, one proposal that Zimmerman submits to the council will include a police station built on slab, built slab on grade with a butler garage of a minimum of 8,000 square feet. I think a proposal like that might make everybody happy because then it's up to the uh, architect if he wants to go more than 8,000 square feet. It's my understanding he's coming back with a couple proposals. Anyway, this would just give him some guidance of what um, the building use committee was looking for. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, in response to what some of Alderman uh, Ryan had to say, uh, the 2.72 acres up there is 118,483.2 square feet. Uh, it comes out to be 43,560 square, uh, square feet per acre. And I'm getting this off of a council document, uh, 1045. Uh, also, in answer to uh, Alderman Manny's question, uh, at one of the building use committees, uh, Mr. Sabanash, uh, when I brought up the idea of the uh, Butler building, he said that if he was to build it underground, uh, it would be $102 a square foot. And if we're looking at a 20,000 square foot garage, that's $2,040,000. And with calling uh, to get some information on Butler buildings, I was told that you can build a Butler building for $25 to $30, $30 a square foot. And so if you're, if you're going to build a, uh, if you're going to build a 20,000 square foot garage at $30 a square foot, that's $600,000 or a potential savings of $1.4 million. Uh, now, of course, you, you, you can build a Butler building any way you want it. You can make it a little more fancy, such as Lutheran High School and Christian High School. Fosse Paint Company has a metal building. Uh, they're energy efficient. Uh, they're very easily expandable. So it's not like we're building a dump for a garage. All, all of the auto dealers, or almost all of them in Sheboygan County, have a metal building for the service park of their, of their dealerships. And what we're going to do with the police department is we're going to be parking vehicles in that, in that metal building. And so I see no problem with building a metal building. And I, I really don't even see a problem of a 20,000 square foot garage if it can be built for $600,000 rather than over $2 million. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Uh, I'm going to go through the lights and then I'll get you. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Regarding the, um, the, this recommendation uh, and the other two uh, from the Building Use Committee, 
That's why we're giving these to the Committee of the Whole. We're giving these to the Committee of the Whole so that they can be referred to the Council so that the architect can have those because he's looking for information on what we see could be possibilities. And I'm sure he's not going to take just these recommendations. I'm sure he's going to work in whatever he can because he's often stated that tell me what price you have and tell me what size you want. I'll show you the different buildings I can build and, and I'll give you some information on that. And uh, that's one of the things we were looking for. And to get back to Alderman uh, Susha's item, uh, these were two separate motions that were made because the first one was to build a slab on grade with a butler garage, eight to 10,000 square feet. And then other changes were made and recommendations that maybe the fitness room should go in there and maybe there should be other things added to that garage. And that's why we said, give the architect the opportunity to increase the square footage of the police garage up to 20,000 so that in case he saw better ways to utilize the space in the station as compared to the garage, he could make recommendations that maybe the fitness center should be part of the garage and uh, maybe something else should be part of the garage and uh, he would need more space. So that's why we gave him the opportunity or we will be giving him the opportunity if these, these pass to, um, to add to it or make his own recommendations. Thank you, Alderman Graf. Alderman Quahunas. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my recommendation would maybe be to say, um, would build a slab on grade Butler garage from 10,000 to 20,000 square feet. So you've got a span there um, because then you're including a minimum and a maximum uh, as far as giving more direction to the architect again. Um, it's just an idea. I think, you know, with your chair, uh, Alderman Graf, also I think that uh, he may need, need some leeway to put in what he needs to put in. Thank you. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can agree that I, the situation is getting ridiculous. I mean, in the last two months, I've read quotes in the paper from Mr. Sabinas saying that just tell me what you need and I'll build it. I've met with him and talked with him individually and he said the same exact thing. Give me some direction. Tell me what you want and I'll build it. So, yes, this is a ridiculous situation. So I think this committee and ultimately the council need to send some direction, even if it's not the perfect direction, because I would expect no matter what we send to Mr. Sabinash, my expectation would be that he would come back with our idea with numbers next to it, and if he's the expert that we hope he is, he would come back with other ideas that are even better than that. If it doesn't fit, he may have a better idea. If there's a better price, a better way to go at it, I would expect he would come back as the expert as we anointed him to do such a thing. So. And as far as what the needs are for the department, I thought we did that three years ago with the Kimi report. So the needs should be pretty clear out there. I don't think we should be sitting around asking anymore unless that report is useless and it was uh, poorly made. I think we have the information in a general sense and we should be able to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Verhassel. Alderman Montemer. Uh, thank you, Chairman Vanderbilt. I agree with Alderman Verhassel and Alderman Graf. Um, Mr. Sabinash has asked for some direction. This is giving him some direction. He will put some ideas together, and of course those ideas can always be changed. We know that. He is the architect. We will look at what he plans. He needs some direction. We can't just let this die. We have to say yes to him with some instructions to go ahead. So I think we should vote on this. And remember, whatever, we have $9 million. He can build a fabulous station for $9 million. And anything less than $9 million means we won't have to borrow that much, which we won't have to pay back that much, which we can maybe get some more policemen on the street. So let's vote. I call the question. Question has been called. So we will vote. Well, is there a second? There's, the question's been called, there's a second, so we'll vote on calling the question with uh, two-thirds to pass it. Alderman Serta, mm -hmm. if you could call the roll. Boren. Aye. Berg. No. Serta, no. Davis. No. Graf. Aye. Hannah. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. No. Myers. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderbilt? No. Verhassel? Aye. Eight. So motion fails to call the question. Thank you. 
Um, I still have a lot of people to talk, so maybe that's a good thing. Uh, President Berg. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The awkward issue here is we have $8.8 .8 million for the architect to design a police station. Uh, the last scenario we had where he, he just had a rough sketch of what $8.8 .8 .8 million didn't include a garage. Uh, I think uh, for me, whatever we do, uh, it still is going to be completely up to him to work within that $8.8 .8 million parameter. It may be out of that that we will have some add-ons, and I think I see perhaps the eight, differently. I see the $8.8 .8 million as perhaps a starting point. Where are we at, and what can we get for that? And then is that reasonable in terms of assuring us a station that will have longevity of longer than, uh, if you would, 20 or 30 years? Uh, I don't think we're going to be having Italian marble, but I sure don't want something that's going to look like the Green Warehouse either. And I think in that regard, uh, we really need to see what he can give to us in terms of square footage, what kind of compromises there are that exist in terms of building materials. I think Alderman Ryan raises an excellent part. Uh, point is that uh, he is the architect. Is there, are there unique advantages in the long run to having an excavated basement uh, uh, for storage versus uh, a butler building? And you know, um, whatever we do, uh, I'm going to vote for this because I see this simply as being recommendations. And I think he will answer them. If he thinks this is not a good idea, I think he has the professional qualifications and the due diligence to, to tell us if this is an idea that can or can't work. And I, I think this for me, if we file this, uh, we don't have the discussion. Uh, if we act on it, it just simply means that we bring this forward, it's a discussion point, and if he really says, thank you very much for your ideas, but you folks are kind of like the 16 blind people around the elephant, uh, in practical reality, this doesn't seem to fit with how typically police stations are designed, we've had the conversation and we can move on, so. Thank you, President Berg. Uh, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do understand where Alderperson Berg's coming from. Given this issue, I think what we're trying to do is micromanage now our architect. Um, we've already set an amount in order to build the building. I think we do need to allow him to do his job, like Alderperson Hannah had reiterated, um, to be specific on what we think we need in terms we've gave him an outline, have him come back and present the information. Um, I've noticed that it's been reiterated over and over again when we come to make decisions that we have this flexibility in place, that um, the decisions we make, like for example with our budget, um, this is just pre preliminary, but our departments were told that they needed to adhere to that budget. Where's the flexibility in that? I just seen it last week, Monday. We were told again, if we're gonna increase the cost of our police station, we can just go back and borrow. I think that's just a false assumption that we're giving this council. We've already set the amount that the architect can build for us. Let us let him do his job. Because in that case, we can just open it up to anything. We could ask um, the department to come up here and give their recommendations concerning the specific spaces, um, how they, they see things fit and deemed for their department. Again, I think we should just allow the architect to do its job, his job, and we've already done that. We've set the amount. So I'll be voting against these specific things. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could, could I ask Chief Kirk a question? It, it's just something not necessarily on these exact items, but it does have to do with how, what we're going to build in the police department, or is that coming up later? Uh, Chief Kirk, could you come up for uh, some questions, sure. please? <laughs> and then I'll ask if anybody else has any questions for Chief Kirk. To, uh, to ask him now, so we don't have to keep on having him come up. Chief, when I went on my uh, <clears throat> ride along a couple weeks ago, I noticed that <clears throat> where we brought in some, some defendants that we, they were put in a room. Are those considered to be interview rooms or are, are those considered to be holding cells? And I, and I, I have to say, uh, uh, I definitely, very definitely can see the need for at least interview rooms for males, females, juveniles, because when the people that we brought in, we had two males and a female, and I believe they had to take the female over to the detective division to deter detain her because there wasn't enough room. So I guess my question is, 
are those considered to be uh, just interview rooms or are those considered to be holding cells? And uh, what's your recommendation as far as the new police department in that regard? I thank you very much, uh, Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Excuse me. The value of, of riding along is cited right here. It's, it's very, very valuable. Sometimes when I speak or when others speak, I refer to our, those interview rooms as holding cells. They are not. They are not meant to be. I don't want holding cells in my new police department. They fall under a different statute completely. We don't want holding cells, yet we refer to them as holding cells, and they're really interview rooms. We want a room that we can put someone in to detain them or hold them, but it's really meant for a temporary custody type of a situation where you then interview. You are absolutely right. These are not holding cells. I don't want holding cells. I do not. These are for permanent lockup. We don't want that. And I appreciate you riding along because you make the point exactly clear in the sense that many times I refer to them as holding cells and are not. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other questions for Chief Kirk? Thank you, Chief. Moving on to Alderman Davis. I think we should get this uh, recommendation out of the, the committee here and make it get in front of the council. As vague as it is, at least direction that, that we can tell um, Sabinash what to do with. You know, I agree with everything here. You know, you set your parameters here, eight to 20,000 square feet, and I look at a, at a Butler building, which is a great idea. You know, the fitness room, everything's in it, all except for the first article, you know, where we're shooting ourselves in the foot. But let's get them out of the committee of the wall, get them in front of the, the council. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I, I just have to go back here to, uh, I believe it was a building use committee meeting. We had July 31st when Mr. Sabinash was here, and he gave us this direction here. He told us what he could build for 60,000 plus square feet, and he gave us a price. To me, it was just really as plain as the nose on your face, what he could do. He was, I, I strong, he was waiting for the direction, of course, from us. I think he still... Has, probably has this, knows what he can do for us, we need to give him that direction. The price has been changed now, I understand, and I understand that, but we were told we could bond for more if, if, if we need it. I think we need to give him that flexibility to go ahead, please design something for us, and, and see where it, where it falls in that 60,000 square foot range. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Recky. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, the one thing, the one question I keep hearing that's really driving me crazy every day of the week with the people I come in contact with is, are you ever going to build a police station? And it's, if I can help it, yes. 50 years ago is what I hoped it would be built. But that became the job of this council. And I'd like to have something that we can show the public. And this would help. It's just, an, it's just a recommendation. It's an idea. We need something to get the ball rolling here. Because otherwise we'll sit here bickering about this for another century before we start building a police station. Enough is enough. They should have been out of downstairs, and I said this before and I'll say it again, they should have been out of there 50 years ago. It's time to get this ball rolling. Give Mr. Sabinash something to work with. Let's just get this thing moving. If we have to look at more later on, we can look at more later on. But the point is, we need to get it going. We need to get it going now. We need to have ideas. This doesn't mean this is going to be the final uh, proposal. He's going to come in here with several ideas, and we're going to have to pick and choose and everything else. That's all coming up yet. But the point is we've got to start someplace, and we've got no place to start at this point in time. And with that, I'll call the question. Well, we're not going to vote on the call the question again. <laughs> there's, there's no more lights, so... Um, <laughs> So we'll have the vote. <laughs> Alderman Graf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> because of our, our discussion that we just had, and um, because the, the other two points are, again, recommendations, can I um, modify the motion to include all three of the points that we um, send to council to recommend to Mr. Sabinash? If my second would agree to that. No. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay. I have a new motion on the amended motion on the floor in a second to include all the points. And before we vote, uh, throughout this discussion, one thing came to my mind that I think tonight is one of the reasons why we haven't built the police station yet. It's really hard to get 16 people to agree on one on one thing. It's, it's just difficult. But with that, I will uh, ask for a roll call vote. Alderman Serta. Okay. This roll call is on the amendment. Okay. We're not doing question. It, just on the amendment. Okay. Alderman Graf, could you use your mic? Thank you. <laughs> The amendment would be to include the other two points with the police station would be built slab on grade with the Butler garage, 8 to 10,000 square feet. And it would also include the fitness room? Right, the, those two, the fitness room and, and the architect, the opportunity to increase the square footage of the police garage up to 20,000 feet, square feet. Everybody understands the motion? The amendment. The amendment. Okay, Alderman Serta. If you could uh, do a roll call on the amendment. Okay. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Hannah. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunas. Aye. Manning. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. No. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. <coughs> 11, motion passes. Now we'll do a roll call vote on the motion. I would that, make a motion that has amended the um, uh, uh, RC be put upon its passage. Second. Motion is second. Uh, Alderman, or Vice President Serta, could you do a roll call? Okay. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta, no. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Hannah. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. 10 for aye, it's motion passes. Thank you. Moving on, item number nine, the next meeting will be October 30th. Alderman Graf. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and that that meeting is going to be regarding what? Uh, I think you know better than me. It was about um. It was budget. A budget review. Budget review and the uh, stormwater fee. Oh, and the storm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Graf. I have a motion to second adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Triple aye. Motion passes.